Thailand's former Prime Minister, Thaksin Shinawatra's release on parole on Sunday, February 18, was the fulfillment of a decade-long dream. His few Thai party finally succeeded after his sister Yin Gluck Shinawatra's efforts to push through a political amnesty bill to bring him home as a free man was swiftly halted by the 2014 military coup. For a party long used to ruling the rules in the House of Representatives, the coup probably taught few Thai a crucial lesson in politics. Legislative force alone, no matter how large the parliamentary majority behind you, would not suffice in bringing Thaksin over the threshold of the conservative barricade and back into Thailand. Few Thai probably relearned this lesson last year. It realized the futility of partnering the Move Forward Party MFP when the MFP-led coalition failed to form a government after the May 2023 general election, despite more than three-fifths of the lower house on its side. For few Thai, the message from the ruling elite was clear, any homecoming for Thaksin would have to be done on their terms. That Thaksin served almost all of his shortened jail term in the police general hospital and has been released on parole is possible only because the conservative elite has permitted it. And they would only have allowed it if they believed Thaksin no longer posed a serious threat to the interests of the military and monarchy. A liberated Thaksin will not change some political realities. His release merely formalizes few Thai's 2011 slogan, Thaksin thinks, few Thai acts. Prime Minister Sretha Thavisin will have to continue putting up with perceptions that he is a proxy for the real Prime Minister. No matter how defiantly he defends his independence and authority, the Conservatives' distrust of Thaksin is also unlikely to suddenly dissipate evidenced by fresh lace majest and computer crime charges brought against him in January, likely to remind him not to misbehave. A liberated Thaksin will, however, have implications for few Thai's ability to retain public support ahead of the next election in 2027, especially against the progressive-minded MFP. Few Thai will hope that Thaksin's popularity, which is dwindling but still useful, will help restore the party's credibility among moderate voters and stem the migration of support to the MFP. Thaksin's release will also enable him to run a tighter sheet and ensure party discipline for crucial legislative votes, such as a contentious special loan bill to finance few ties digital wallet handout scheme. Thaksin will also want to make use of his newfound freedom to ensure that Phil Tai is fully behind his youngest daughter Peyton Tan Shinawat. She was made party chief last year, and thus in a position for the prime ministerial post sometime in the future. He does not appear to be in a hurry to remove Mr. Sretha, though this could quickly change if Mr. Sretha fails to get the party's signature election pledge, the digital wallet handout scheme, Push through. Thaksin's release could revive speculation that the Democratic parties could put in a more energetic attempt to sideline conservative parties, principally through a resurrected alliance between Phil Thai and the MFP. The pro military senators, which played a central role in blocking the MFP from forming the government last year, will end their terms in May, and the next Senate will not be able to participate in a vote for a prime minister. Few Thai and the MFP may be on different sides of the parliamentary aisle, but a secret meeting between MFP line figure Thanathon Joon Gruong Grankert and Thaksin in Hong Kong last year could yet bear fruit. There is also the idea of calling for snap elections in the second half of 2024. If Few Thai and the MFP secure a majority of lower house seats to form a fully liberal government, it could theoretically explore more radical institutional reforms to undo the legacy laid down by retired general and former Prime Minister Priyut Chanocho's successive governments. Yet the perilous precipice on which the MFP now stands will likely convince Thaksin otherwise. The Conservatives will not be blind to the possibility of a tie-up between the two largest political parties and are not taking any chances.
The Constitutional Court's January ruling against the MFP's plan to reform the Lace Majest law has since been taken up by the Election Commission. It is an ominous sign that the MFP's time may well be up very soon. In the tried and tested Thai tradition of political party dissolutions, Thaksin, for all of his former praise for the MFP's tactics in the 2023 election, may not protest too much if the MFP's untimely demise paves the way for Phil Thai to be the big winner in 2027. That would help the party assert its claim to the prime ministerial post and for Ms. Paytonton to step up gracefully, undisturbed by potential challenges such as the MFP's ambitious Peter Lim Jeron Red. Foreign investors and companies in Thailand have largely welcomed the relative political stability of the past few months, as this has had a direct impact on policy continuity and the timeliness of pro-investment regulatory reforms. These factors are especially crucial at a time when regional competition for foreign capital continues to heat up over emerging sectors such as electric vehicles, critical minerals and the digital economy. Investors will be hoping that the government remains stable, which will give it a fighting chance, at the very least, to catch up with regional frontrunners such as Indonesia and Vietnam. The million-dollar question is, as reflected in Phil Thai's slogan, whether Thaksin is thinking of following the conservative script or tearing it up.